Go, go, go! One, Armani suits and run! Two, Air Jordan shoes for you! Three, linen shirts for free! Let's go, let's go, let's go! Hey guys, Pete here. Well, we saw a lot of different endings and moved past the Better Call Saul timeline in episode 9. It's safe to say things will never be the same, and now it's kind of hard to imagine what these next four episodes will look like. That's not to say that that's a bad thing, it's actually pretty exciting. And if everything that came before is any indication, then we're definitely in for a treat. The only question we can expect to get an answer to is what will happen to Gene Takovic. That's been set up over the first five seasons. Seasons, there is a payoff coming in that timeline. We know from the teasers that Jeff will make another appearance, even though it looks like he's going to be played by a different actor. And of course, the poster for this season is Gene putting on that loud red jacket. The brief teaser they aired after episode 609 is a shot of something that looks like it belongs in the Gene timeline, and I will come back to talk about that in a second. The other big question is how Kim's story will end, and as much as I want to know the answer to that, they really haven't given us anything to go on. The title of episode 610 is Nippy, and it's got a really simple synopsis saying, A new player enters the game. Because Aaron Paul and Brian Cranston are reported to be returning in this episode, it seems like a good guess that the new player is Walter White. The only thing that Nippy is ever meant to me is cold, and I can't think of any Breaking Bad or BCS reference that it could be related to. If you look it up, there are some different definitions, but none of them are common, at least not in the United States. So the last time we saw Gene, he was in Omaha during the winter, and in the teaser with Jeff, you can see that there's still snow on the ground in case you forgot. What's more interesting about the title is that it breaks the convention of the titles all being something and something. Fun and games, point and shoot, and so on. Even before the breakup was confirmed, people on Reddit were guessing that all the X and X titles were for episodes where Kim and Jimmy were together, and the shift to one word would mark the transition to Saul being alone. As you've probably seen by now, the visual clues including his 2005 license plate tags and the handicap tag that expires in 2008 indicate that the time jump at the end of 609 takes place in 2005, which is only about a year after Kim left. Writer and producer Thomas Snaz, who is usually a great source for clearing things up, kind of muddied the waters on this one by saying on Twitter that he thought we're roughly in 2007. If he's right about that, which he should be since he was there when they wrote the story, then that means the tags would be wrong. And that wouldn't be the first mistake they made like that, so I suppose we'll have to wait and see. I had a lot of people asking if the public masturbator client Saul was talking about on the phone could be a hint that he'd be meeting with Badger, because that's what he thought his case was when they first met. But that meeting is firmly established to be in late 2008. It seems like a lot of these details that we heard in that flash forward are just references to get Breaking Bad fans excited about what we might see now that Saul is back. Apparently, he gets a lot of public masturbation cases. The choice of jumping to 2005 or 2007 is kind of confusing. There must be a reason they decided not to jump right into the events of Breaking Bad, but I wouldn't say it's instantly obvious. I guess it establishes that he's gotten his Sandpiper settlement, and has fully embraced this strategy of throwing himself into being Saul full-time to bury the pain that he's carrying. They did a fantastic job in that short bit of screen time to show how he doesn't give himself a chance to think. He has a sex worker with him when he's at home after work, and every indication is that's a regular thing. From the time he wakes up in the morning, he's got the Bluetooth on and he doesn't stop working. I guess this being in between the two show's timelines tells us that he's been keeping it up for a relatively long time by 2008 when he meets Walt and everything changes again. What's even more mysterious is Kim's story. She doesn't give Jimmy any indication of where she plans to go, and as much as 609 was a fitting ending for their relationship, it didn't come off as one for the character. Howard and Lalo were both killed off, which is obviously different, it's a definitive end, but the crew had shirts made for their last days and they were featured on the Insider Podcast to talk about their experience. 
None of that has happened with Ray Seahorn, and I might be doing my own bit of coping by reading into that, but regardless, I feel like there's a good chance that it's a sign that there's more to tell. I mean, as important as Ray Seahorn is to this show, it would feel incomplete if we didn't see her again. How that plays out and how that fits in are the biggest unanswered Better Call Saul questions. The first thing that comes to mind is a reunion, and that brings up hope of a type of redemption, even if it doesn't cross over into being a happy ending. I don't think you could have watched this show closely and not wanted that to happen. But there's a detail in the last episode that makes things a little more complicated. In my videos so far, I've shied away from talking about what draws Kim and Jimmy together because ultimately the answer to that would be it's complicated. There are a lot of reasons. But because I was really surprised to see a lot of fans questioning whether Kim saying that she didn't want things to end because she was having too much fun meant that she never loved him. I think it's a good time to re-examine her decision. What she's saying is that their love isn't enough to justify their being together since people around them get hurt. Peter Gould has said on different occasions that they thought about addiction when they thought about these two being together. And if you compare her decision to treatment models, it looks like she's choosing abstinence. There's a not very subtle title of the first episode being Wine and Roses, which is a nod to the movie Days of Wine and Roses, which is about a couple on a downward spiral because of alcoholism. If she believes that's the only thing that will work, then it gets harder to figure out how they might be drawn back together. Time away shouldn't be enough for a character with resolve as strong as Kim Wexler. I mean, she just stopped being a lawyer because she doesn't think she was worthy of the profession. Her changing her mind on this major decision she made on her own terms wouldn't fit. So that's all to say that we'll have to see at least some of Kim's life away from Jimmy to understand how she's moved on and who she's become. And that brings us back around to the timeline questions, and I guess since we don't know where she'll go, the location questions as well. A lot can happen in four full episodes of TV. Think about what happened in the last three in a very compressed amount of time. The show is currently untethered from the original linear structure it followed through Jimmy's transformation, and could do just about whatever it wants from here. As I mentioned in the beginning, this short black and white teaser we got is a shot of a department store in a mall like the one Gene works in. What's happening in the voiceover is not absolutely clear to me. It sounds like Gene has gotten on the PA and is trying to cause a commotion by telling shoppers to take things for free. Without context, I'm not sure what else to say about it. I've been expecting, since he told Ed on the phone that he'll take care of the problem himself, that he'll go after Jeff, but how this might fit in with that remains to be seen. There are still other teasers from the mid-season break that we haven't seen yet as well. We haven't heard the uh, happy ending line yet. We haven't found out where Kim reading the oath comes into play. And then there's the conversation where it sounds like he's telling someone he just paid off to take it and just go away. Never come back. The last teaser from 608 did play right into the next episode. We saw Saul in his mansion, and the voiceover was from the last thing he said at the end of the episode. That makes me think there's a good chance we'll see Gene in this episode, but it's confusing because I wouldn't expect to spend the whole episode there. Primarily because for Walt and Jesse to show up together, we need to be in or around the Breaking Bad timeline. It's possible that they might jump around, we could see a flash forward at the beginning of the episode, we could see them jump into the Gene timeline at the end of the episode like the last one, and then what I've been thinking about more is that I'm hoping to see some Gene scene equivalents in Kim's life after Albuquerque. So it could take on a whole different direction and feel from what we watched so far. There were no promo pictures at all this week to give any additional clues, and I think this is a pretty good place to be. I'm ready to be surprised and I'm ready to be blown away with whatever they came up with. In a prequel series where everything had to line up to the original to make sense, we're truly in uncharted territory. It's an exciting time to be a fan, and I'm so excited I'm going to be doing a preview stream on Saturday to talk about it with some friends. I do like the addiction analogy when it comes to Kim's decision, and we'll be talking about that some more in the stream. 
If you think about their progression, how would they recapture the magic from scams like what they started out with after what they pulled off with Howard? Before things went wrong, what they were able to do there was impressive. And so where would that end? You'd just be chasing that high you could never get, and she's right, a lot more people could get hurt. So let me know in the comments what you think will happen. Do you think Carol Burnett will show up in the Breaking Bad timeline or the Gene timeline? And overall, how are you hoping the series will end? Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.